afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Bully. I'm running the kitchen today. Whoa. And it's the Afternoon Express cook along. And today we're making a comforting winter warmer, but using alternatives to the usual suspects. When we think of cuts of meat for winter, we think slow cooked and on the bone. But this afternoon, we're using a cut often overlooked and taking us through it is our resident chef, Clem, along with chef Aya. How are my two chefs today? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, thank I'm you. I'm very good. I'm very excited for this. Are you excited? excited are you also yeah. a meat person? Very much. Because Clem loves discussing Whoa. the different cuts uh -huh. and the flavors in the cuts and the amount of fat in the cuts. I've learned everything about steak from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. But today's yeah. one's really great. We're using pork fillet, okay? Mm -hmm. I think it must be the first time we're actually using it on the show. I'm going to teach you how to get maximum flavor out of today's dish. It's, it's quite an intense one. It's going to be truffled raviolis mm -hmm. in a cream mushroom sauce with the pork fillets, okay? I hope you came hungry. Wow. This is perfect for winter, but also you should be able to make this from beginning to end in half an hour. Wow. Yeah. I did come hungry and luckily I work, I have the kind of job where I can come to work hungry <laughs> and I don't have to think about what I'm going to eat when I'm at No, work. it's going to, I mean, we want to show you a lot of stuff to do today. I mean, we have like this beautiful mushroom that we have here and we want to teach mushrooms. you how to cook the mushrooms the right way and you can get that nice meaty flavor from them because mm -hmm. that's what I made for. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. And to get today's recipe and shopping list sent directly to your phone, simply SMS the keyword EAT to 33650. SMSs are 1 Rand 50 each and no free SMSs apply, as you know. And if you're following along in the kitchen, we are streaming live on our YouTube page right now. So keep your device with you handy right next to you. Our lines are open on 021-430-9881. And if you have any culinary questions or if you just get stuck along the way or you just want to chat, just call us. And if you couldn't forget, and of course we couldn't forget about dessert. Oh yeah. And um, while you're on your phone, head over to our social media platforms where we're asking you, what's your go-to dessert? Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. And today we're making an old time favorite, but with a twist of cocoa. What's your favorite dessert? Is it a honest. panna cotta? No, it's That's not. Your it's no? not. You know what? A good chocolate cake. Like the most densest, most chocolatey. Uh, chocolate cake. Yeah? That's it. Yeah. yeah. And yours? A well baked cheesecake. A well-baked cheesecake. Yeah. I have to go with you on that one. I love Sweet. a good cheesecake. A fridge cheesecake as well. Love those. And if you want the recipe for this indulgent dessert, then simply SMS the keyword Clover to 33650. And remember that SMSs are one round 50 each and no free SMSs apply. Um, before we get the show on the road, coming up on Thursday evening at 7.30 is the next installment of Presenter Search on 3. <laughs> this week, they head to Joburg for their last stop on the audition journey. I was lucky enough to be one of the first round judges and I can tell you now, there was definitely some highlights moments in the City of Gold, some very funny moments as well. This Thursday evening at 7.30 on Presenter Search on 3, the City of Gold awaits as auditions head to Johannesburg. We're expecting the biggest television personalities. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, there's so much talent. I wish you were just here. <laughs> Join us. You know you want to. That's Presenter Search <laughs> on 3, Thursday night Boom. at 7.30 on SABC3. Repeat Saturdays at 12 midday. The stage is yours. Wow, I can't wait for you to see it. Um, and uh, apologies to those that I had a good giggle at, <laughs> but there was lots of fun to be had. And joining us for today's Cook Along is the bubbly and absolutely hilarious actress and media personality, Felicity Rican. You may remember her on the sitcom Coconuts or on one of her many roles on the local dramas like Josie Age and Issy Dingo. Or perhaps you just best remember her smooth voice and quick wit as co-presenter <laughs> on one of Joburg's best loved breakfast radio shows with Darren Wackhead Simpson. Well Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, lovely to have you with us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a bit of a reunion for us, hey? Yes, it is. Um, yes, it because is. Uh, if, if those of you who know, Felicity and I were contestants on Survivor Maldives. Yes, we were. And uh, when you're asked about it, you say you barely survived. Well, yeah, I say I barely survived, but I also know that I could have probably won it if, you know, you guys didn't vote me off. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> it, was, it was hectic. Yeah. And you did love a bit of a moan, eh? Hey? Of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> but at the same time, it was, it was such a wonderful, wonderful yeah. experience. And you kind of think that you know what's going to happen. And then you literally, there is no yeah. idea. Nothing can prepare you. And, and, and one thing I remember about it for me, it was such a shocker. Yeah. It was a shocker to every part of my system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was, 
It was terrifying and exciting and exhilarating all at the same time. And there's some people I'm really happy I never had to see again. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it's not. We don't have that no, problem. No. Absolutely. <laughs> um, a lot of South Africa got to know you on Coconuts. Yes. What was it like being on that set? You know, Coconuts was my first like real big television series. I'm um, playing a lead as well. Um, and it was very intensive, very hard work. Very exciting once again. Um, we had a lot of comedians working on the scripts. Mm. So it was comedic timing as well. Yes. We worked quite long hours as well because we had a live, we had a kind of rehearsal where we performed in front of the cameras and then a live in front of a proper studio audience as well. So we didn't have canned laughter. Um, and that was twice a week. And I had my two little girls. And so like six days a week, we were on set working, 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 but Whoa. also just laughing. And yes. because it was written so well and the script was a little bit, what's the word? Not controversial, but the script was a little bit edgy. Yes. It was a lovely. So it was triggering. Yes. Yeah. It was yeah. a lovely space to work in. And which also led the social conversation around you to question your... Uh, your blackness or your coconutness, yes. rather. And what are some of the stereotypes that, that get thrown at you? Well, you know, Bonnie, the funny thing is I'm a dark skinned colored girl who sounds like I'm white when I'm speaking English, clings with a Buddha, my sister, got Afrikaans, but I can't speak a word of a vernacular language. <laughs> you must get so yes. much flack for that. Absolutely. I do. It's less now, but when I was younger, there was absolutely a kind of, you know, um, backlash oh but why can't you and I kind of go my mother tongue is Afrikaans so I'm not sure I don't question you for the languages that you speak I don't Absolutely. see how it's fair questioning me yeah um and getting to play a coconut in a show like coconuts there's a little element of validation where you're like yes I'm an exotic yeah fruit. look at me <laughs> and, and you know what I totally get you because I mean over the years I've gotten the same complaints oh she's such a, a snob oh she's such a coconut mm. eventually you just really have to accept who you are Absolutely. you have to accept how you speak you have to accept how you were enculturated Wh whatever it was that yeah. your journey led you to that pace you're in you have yeah. to accept it and just thrive and just be like okay cool this is what I am exactly this is how I'm coming I'm not changing absolutely I'm um, just horse I'm riding yeah absolutely and then you obviously have a, a beautiful radio relationship yeah. and uh, you you were part of the winning breakfast team yes uh, while you were there yes. what was what were those mornings like do you know, I can honestly tell you, firstly, I'm so honored and I'm exceptionally grateful and blessed that I was lucky enough to land with my bum in the butter because I really did. I think there's so many people. That team is incredible. Yeah. We were wow. absolutely incredible. And you're an award winning team. I know. Yeah. And it was it was so much laughter. It was so spontaneous, but yet guided. It was mm. honest. It was real. And I think. The reason why we were so successful was because the listener knew that the conversations that we were having as a team amongst ourselves was a conversation that they were invited to and a part of as well. Yeah, so because, because sometimes when people listen to the radio, they get that feeling like I'm just eavesdropping. Absolutely. And these people are having such a hoot. Yeah. And they've just gotten together this morning to have a fat chat. <laughs> Which a lot of the time we were. <laughs> yeah, but it was food. inclusive. It was yeah. very inclusive. And we want to hear your stories. And I always say I find it so what's the word, kind of amazing how people would share really kind of deeply personal things with us because they trusted us. Yes. And so you've got to kind of be responsible about that as well. Do you know what I mean? You can't yeah. kind of then go and run with that. But at the same time, what a blessing just to have kind of people going, you know, well, whatever it was, and share their yeah. biggest secret. And we were like, wow, you just, you just honestly wow, told us that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. We'll take that on board. Exactly. You're also a mom of two and I you've got am. four dogs. I do. I do. Um, what, are, what are they all? So I've got two Afrikaners. Yeah. Um, Basil and Stella. Stella's my neurotic dog. Um, Basil is her brother. He climbs walls. And then quite recently... Um, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean Stella's neurotic? She's skittish. She's, she is skittish and quite neurotic. I actually can't skittish animals. Um, <laughs> struggle. And she's... Well, I, you know, the thing is, I wasn't going to get Stella. I was only going to get Basil. And but then they tricked me. Your heart. Yeah, and they were like, look, here's a sister. And I was like, I'll take them both, thanks. <laughs> um, and then I had a great Dane, and unfortunately we had to put him down. Aww. But So then I only had the two dogs left. And then I thought, I need one more puppy. Of course, my kids disagreed. They were like, we don't honestly need more dogs. I was yeah. like, well, just one more. Yeah. And then I ended up getting two more. Um, so then I got Charlie so and Sage. And Charlie is a Labrador 
across Aresdale, so she's quite big. Mm -hmm. And then Sage is what we call a fox dog. There's no such thing. But she's, <laughs> <laughs> she looks like a little fox. She's a corgi and she's... She's big. a cutie. Yeah, very cute. So, how? I mean, we all know that pets are amazing for kids. Yeah. But how is it... What's the relationship between your children and your pets? And is, has it taught them a lot more responsibility? Has it changed the social dynamic in the home? Do you know, I, I, th I know parents like to think that pets will teach kids responsibility. I think, I think we all as parents know that that's not the case. That's not, yeah. It's not the case yeah, at all. I love your honesty. Yeah. I've always loved that about yeah, you. Yeah, it's a complete lie. <laughs> you <laughs> end up taking In care. In fact, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So much more responsibility. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. I've signed up for that. Yeah. Um, but I think there's just, there's a generosity and spirit that having pets allows you to have. And yeah. you can't control an animal's love. Yes. So because that's it's so unconditional. Exactly. It's completely, and, and that I think is a great lesson that just complete, that you can actually love entirely, completely, mm -hmm. wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. And it's probably the reason why I don't have cats. Sorry to cat people out there. I'm, but I'm a cat person. Are you? you have officially just offended me. Really? <laughs> See, I need to be adored. <laughs> Cats don't yeah, adore and cats me. Cats are like adore me. Oh, oh, I, yeah. I need their attention. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so something unique happened today in, in our cook along section. Yes. We never ask our guests for a recipe, but you actually are making your recipe. Yes. I'm very excited. Yes. And uh, we're going to let you guys in on what it is a little bit later. And she's a foodie at heart and the perfect guest for our cook along. So get your aprons on and join us, join us in the kitchen with Felicity. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're about to get the party started in the kitchen. We've all cozied up and uh, everything looks amazing. Everything that's going to go straight to the hips is sitting right in front of mm, us. Good time. <laughs> and for today's cook along, we're looking at an alternative cut of meat that is usually overlooked, but incredibly tasty and affordable. With winter about to kick off, it's the perfect comforting dish for the cold, wet nights. And there's nothing like some fresh pasta to step it up to the next level. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. So before we get cooking, I just want to say that all our ingredients today, we actually bought at Woolworths, which we actually always do for one specific reason. We use our My School card. We're on a big mission right now to giving back. And it's so strange. I actually found out South Africa's got like one of the most highest like charity organizations in the world. Really? We are a giving nation. Really? Yeah. How easy is that? And super great. So what Woolies have done is they've made giving really easy with My School. So we've shot all our ingredients, swiped our cards. And we've selected the Chalk House to be our like our beneficiary. So every time we shop, we swipe, we give to Chuck because we are trying to get them that house, guys. So we yes. want our viewers to go out there, get a muscle card, or get the app that's even easier, yes. and start giving. Yeah, and stand yeah. in solidarity with us and choose Chuck. Absolutely. Right? So like this meal, okay, I was gonna say now we can also like share with the Chuck guys, you know what? Well, in spirit, in spirit, <laughs> yes. let's get cooking. Yes. So I feel like today's gonna be one of those days where I'm not gonna actually cook at all. Felicity, you seem like you've got this on point. I'm not going to lie, I love to cook it. All right. Yeah, you can cool. see. Why this particular <laughs> recipe? So it's pork medallions and truffle pasta. Yeah. Why the pork? Well, firstly, actually pork, like you said, is a really cheap cut of meat. Also, it's really tasty and can take on a lot of different flavors as well. So you can take it spicy. You can take it kind of Mediterranean root. You can take a classical French. You can do a lot of things with it. But one of the things I was kind of fooling around in the kitchen and I was like, oh, I want something else to cook. Yeah. And this is one of the things I came up with. Awesome. Yeah. Mm. Cool. And you guys are going to actually show me how to cut medallions because yeah. Yeah. I'm most confused about how people mm -hmm. get Get I'm them gonna, into like perfect cubes. I'm going to show you how to clean it, how to cut it, but that's going to be a little later. For now, I have to get started on that mushroom sauce, mm. guys. This mushroom sauce is super decadent. So let's, yes. But before that, talk about the pasta we're using. We could have used normal pasta, not today. Yeah. We're using Willie's Fault Pasta. So I'm using the formaggio, which is a cheese flavored one. And then Aya's got the butternut pan sake. Yeah. We're kind of like switching it up there, a bit of vegetable, a bit of cheese mm. in there, different mm. flavor, different texture. That's going in there. So Aya, how about I pass that on to you? You've got All your right. water there. Yeah. Very important, you have to season your water with like a lot of salt. salt. It mm -hmm. tastes as salty as the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. I've never tasted the Mediterranean Sea. I'm <laughs> guessing it's very salty, okay? So get it nice and salty. But now, on to you. Yes. This recipe is brought to us by butter. Yes, okay? mother's milk. It's, it's, butter. Very, it's very, very important, I love right? Butter. You I want love that butter. flavor. So your, your pan is nice and hot. I yes, can see it's smoking. Can see that. Yep. So I'm going to add some oil. That's just going to stop our yeah. butter burning. There we go. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh. And if you want today's recipe and shopping list sent directly to your phone, simply SMS the keyword EAT to 33650. SMSs are 1 Rand 50 each. And no free SMSs apply. And you have any culinary questions, you can call us live on 021-430-9881. Cool. Let's cool. get cooking. So our butter is nice and brown, and that's not a bad thing. When so it comes it's not to, a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, right? But what you want to do, you kind of want to make sure that it's just not that it so doesn't get any browner or brown in one spot because that's mm. just going to oh. burn so give it a nice swirl that brown is going to help us because that's delicious butter caramelized flavor it's going to help us brown our mushrooms and mushrooms are going to suck up that flavor it's going to be amazing okay, so we've got nice. some shimijis now really cool I am so impressed. Samiji's so literally ends off and just break them apart. I did not have to say anything. Wow. I did not have to say a thing. Let me just turn the heat up right now. I was actually waiting for her to cut wow. them. Man. I, I was right really waiting for her to cut them. Right because I was still going to say, my tip when it comes to mushrooms, that very rarely do you take a knife to a mushroom. With this big, with a big oyster like this, mm. yes, because it's so big, you're going to have to. But mushrooms, they've got natural fibers in them, like meats do as well. You always get cut against the grain, you know yeah. that? Mushrooms have grains in them as well. If you cut through them and you put them in the hot pan, yeah. it's going to start like sweating. You don't oh. want that. So all you do is tear. And you'll actually tear it on the actual grain of the mushroom. Oh, yes. That's a great. And you get like nice and rugged edges on your mushrooms, which go so, nice and crispy. So, so what did Felicity do that just impressed you, Nana? Because I didn't even have to say, don't cut the mushrooms. She just took the ends off and started breaking them up by hand. Look at her, she's just here like, are you, yeah, are you yeah, yeah. for my yeah. job? Yeah. Yeah. This guy, yeah, I'm a yeah. little yeah. nervous right she's now. She's like, acts about me, acts about me. <laughs> okay, so you know you've always heard this thing about don't overcrowd the pan of the mushrooms. Yeah. I don't agree, okay? Yeah. You can overcrowd the pan of the mushrooms, that's fine. The trick is, once the mushroom hits the pan, treat it like a steak, don't touch it. Don't touch it. You're yeah. gonna get that nice crust in it, and it's gonna start browning. As soon as you start fiddling, it, yeah? it starts like, 
You kind of break the crust and all that liquid comes out. Wow. And also with the salt, I mean, you don't have to add the salt while, you can add the salt when they're done cooking. You don't have to add them while, I mean, immediately, because you're going to now, they're going to start to... The salt Yeah, the water yeah. yeah. out, and then it's going to be so yeah. mushy okay. and... Yeah. Exactly. I always put in salt. I always wow. put in salt because yeah. I want them to kind of dehydrate a little bit mm. so I can get that nice kind of yeah. crust around so them. So we're going we're gonna to try this, method. we see how it okay. okay. So we're going to let it sit for a bit. Cool. Once we get that nice crust in it, then we season okay. it. Okay. We're going we're to try that. Now... I, I'm kind of ready to start adding garlic. Yes. So when we start doing the turn, the garlic will start marrying in there. So we use roasted garlic only in this kitchen. Mm. All right? Yum. So we've had yeah. a few viewers ask us how we actually make it, and it's the easiest thing in the world. So it's this, a bit of foil. So this is your recipe, Felicity, and usually how would you put your garlic in? I usually use fresh garlic, um, and then I just chop that fine, while I grate it on a very fine grater, and I'll kind of add it in semi kind of towards the end because it's so small, I don't want it to burn. So. Hey. Yeah. She's speaking your language. She right? is, totally. Okay, back to the roasted garlic. So I've cut you clearly the missed your calling. <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. You never know. Might, maybe you and I can go on the road. Absolutely. Let's do that, guys. Yes. I will not be around for the next two months. <laughs> it's okay. All right, okay, so the roasted garlic, a little bit of olive oil going over there. Yes. And you kind of want, you want that olive oil to get in there. Keep it nice and moist. Okay. And then salt and pepper, just like that. Mm -hmm. And then we wrap it up. And then we put it into an oven. I'm it so glad you're easy. stirring. I was freaking out. I was oh, like, we need to stir it right now. Okay, that's so amazing. this goes in for about an hour and it comes out, it's super, super yeah. soft. Mm. Look okay. at that rich golden brown. It's Look beautiful. at that, you see, yeah. Yeah. you see, just like meat, you want that crust. Yeah. So we're in a good place right now. So Chef Aya, can you maybe chop up uh, onion onions for us? For you. Actually, maybe to... even just half of it, but like super fine. Yes. Super right. fine. And let's talk about some herbage, okay? Mushrooms love rosemary. Mm -hmm. Oh, do they? It's so okay. amazing how mushrooms are like meat, you mm. know? Beef loves rosemary and that strong garlic yes. flavors. It's an earthy, woody vibe. Yes. Exactly. That, that, yeah, that it's got. So, if I can, guys, I haven't even touched a knife. I haven't even done a thing. I love this. You so love not using knives I, in your cooking. Yeah, and I love also when I can just chill like this. <laughs> just, all right. Aya, what's your favorite ingredient to cook with here? I'll also say mushrooms. rosemary. I'll say rosemary. rosemary. I love rosemary, and it goes well with like your meats, your soups, your stews, like everything that I use normally. And rosemary. what are the do's and don'ts of cooking with rosemary? Do you add it at the end? Do you add it at the no, beginning? No. Do you fry it? Do you not fry it? Do you chop it? Do you it not depends chop on it? what you're doing. I mean, if you are going to be doing like a roast, um, a slow cook, you can just put it as a whole there, like rough chop everything, and then just let it cook. But at the same time, mm. you don't want to put a lot of it. You don't want it to overpower your food. Yeah. So normally, I'll just put like a whole of this if I'm doing mushrooms, and then like take it out before the mushrooms get cooked. Yeah. So for me, I don't want it to overpower, because at the end of the day, the king or the queen has to be the mushroom if I'm cooking the mushrooms. Yeah. So it's just there for the background flavor for me. Yeah. So yeah. So it favors quite quickly. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. and it's very, it, it's very strong. It's very strong. Yeah. yeah, I learn something new every day. I mean, I just keep it in from the beginning right through to the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gave myself away there. Just a quick recap. So we heated our butter and our olive oil, and then we put in our mushrooms. We didn't chop them, we tried to, um, Break them, them against, up. break them mm -hmm. up. Um, and what did you call this little thing that we had to cut off? The shimichi bottoms. The shimichi bottoms? Yeah. The mushrooms are called the mushroom shimichi. Bottoms, yeah. The bottoms ah. of the... Yeah. Right. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and then so, we're, um, over this side, we're making the onion. We're chopping some onion. Yeah, um, the onions are ready now. Should I just yes. put them over? Go in. Okay, cool. And during the ad break, we're going to yeah, add... Absolutely. There you go. During the ad break, we're going to add some cream to that. That's going to start cooking down. And when we come back, we'll start talking about those pork medallions. Wow, very, very exciting. We'll be right back. We're going to take a short break. <laughs>
<laughs> Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Thank you so much for joining in the conversation and tuning in. We are trending number three, so woo! Yay! Yay! Um, so everyone's exciting about, excited about what we're cooking today. So uh, so. we've got to keep wowing them. Uh -huh. All right, you ready? Uh -huh. So now there's pork, okay? So this is the most tender part of any animal, actually. Mm -hmm. It's the fillet. It comes from just like the back area over there. It's the muscle that doesn't really do anything. Mm -hmm. So it's nice yeah. and relaxed. You'll yeah. find that the muscle that does do a lot, like the ox tail, things yeah. like that. I, keep, I mean, you can imagine the, tail, the cow's tail Swish, going. Swishing, yeah. yeah. Extra tough muscles needs a long time to cook. Long okay. time this one, this is like a chilled, relaxed piece of meat. So okay, the yeah. one these, thing... These parts of me are quite soft. Yeah, because yeah. One of you, you, but you also do <laughs> yoga, right? So I'm, I'm wondering if that I was you, I'd have to slow cook it a little bit. I know, you'd have to cook me for long. And if you want today's recipe on shopping, send directly to your phone simply sms the keyword eat to double three six five zero sms's are one round fifty each and no free sms's apply and if you have any culinary questions or any tips or you just want to chat call us live on zero two one four three zero nine double eight one cool to talk about this pork again so oh yeah you've got a beautiful piece over there i want to show you how we actually got that, that this is lovely. called sinew right it's mm. the part of the mouse as soon as it starts cooking this contracts. So you'll notice if I had to put this in the pan just like this, it'll actually curl up. Yeah. So you want to remove that, and that's really easy. You just actually just get a cut or you can actually So the actual sinew makes it contract. Yes. Yeah. So you that's why you always want to take this off when you're cooking any meats, any pork, lamb, ah. beef. Mm. Any of that, so get that off nicely. It's super easy. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I usually hack at this part. I can hold like this and go. <laughs> really? Yeah. And, you'd also it, and it adds no flavor whatsoever. No. no. It does and nothing it's for chewy. the dish. And actually it's very easy to, 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 to remove from the, from the fillet. And the other trick that I've, I've seen with, with fillets, like soft cuts of meat, it's very, very great to actually keep them room temperature before you grill them. Yes. Because in that way mm. you get every part of the meat to just relax. And also after cooking, you have to like keep it for like five minutes or like four or three minutes to rest yeah. so that you can enjoy it more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm learning a lot about this thing of letting your meat relax okay. and letting your meat I'm also just a squasher. You, chill you out. To. And it actually changes the flavor profile. Yeah. It really does. And also if you think about it, okay, this is winter, right? So it's actually a really great way to teach about your meat. Think about when you're a little kid, right? You're running outside in the rain, your mom yeah. calls you, she's like, it's bath time, right? Yeah. Your body's really cold. As soon yes. as your bottom hits the hot water, you get a clench. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's what happens course. to the meat. But if you actually relax a bit, does your body come to room temperature again, you warm, before you get into the bath, you're just going to relax. Absolutely. That's actually the best way of putting it, eh? I'm check everybody at home be like, clinch right now, clinch. No. But you know, I'm, I'm actually thinking about all the any vegans who are watching us and they are just like thinking, oh my gosh, listen to this conversation. You're talking about relaxed and clenched meat. I want to cry. But well, that's a great way to remember it. Okay, so. Absolutely. Like I did, and I love that little squish, just a little mm -hmm. bit, okay? And then you're going to season, we're going to actually season on our board. This is our board that we actually use for meat, so mm -hmm. we are good. And then you want to add your meat, your oil first, and that's okay. the glue. So the glue for the seasoning, salt and pepper, and you always do when uh, that chef, uh, the salt bay, salt bay wasn't yes. wasn't joking. Oh, you've got to do it from a height. Yeah, you've got to do it from a height. Yeah, it's spread it equally. Like there's a yeah. there's a proper like nice spreading. There we go. Wow. Do you have a trick? Do you have a special trick like a salt bay trick? I think all the chefs do that. Do they do that yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the in thing now. I mean, before the video came out, I'll let you do that here. Yeah. Not try you it let out. Let me do. I'll let you do it. Go for it. Go. Okay, fine. <laughs> do I throw it? No, you, no, you, no, yes, no. you throw it. Show me how you do it. it. Throw, me. throw it. I, th I thought he threw it. He threw it. <laughs> You're so good at that. Yes. I'm good at it. Don't tell anyone, Felicity. That's it. Whatever happens in this kitchen stays in this kitchen. <laughs> so, chef, you got some oil on there? Okay. Can I pass this to you? So a very important thing is you never want to oil your griddle pan or any pan that you're going to be searing in. Number you want to oil the meat. There we go. Because the reason is it's going to start smoking before you actually put the yeah. meat in. And second of all, if you look at a griddle pan, it's got those hills and valleys. Mm. All the oil is going to sit at the bottom. It's not going to touch your meat anyway. Mm. So always get the oil on your meat and then hand it over to the chef. Can and I just do this with my hands? And just there put we it go. away from myself. Wow, I love this medallion shape. That's, that's like, is that a classic medallion shape now? Well, well no. We, no. It's, there is a medallion no set. is anything that's just a little piece, There we go, right? yeah, there okay. is no set shape, okay. but like you said. So the what trick is we're gonna try and get some cross hatches on these. Mm -hmm. But oh, that's looking so get good. get some olive oil on this one. Make sure all your pieces have some olive oil on them. <laughs> 
That's my two cents. There we go. <laughs> to add. I'm just quickly chopping this parsley now. It's gonna go um, on the mushroom sauce once it's done cooking, because I don't want to put it there while it's cooking. It's gonna tear the color and everything. So. Okay, cool. So what's happening with this cream and the mushroom here? That's, it's, um, it's just reducing. Simmering. And it's like, yeah, it's oh, simmering, it's reducing, reducing so that all the flavors can bind together and get us creamy, nice sauce at the end of the day. Lovely. So you put this on a really low heat. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I also find that if you put in cream, sometimes you've got to be very careful with the seasoning because cream can dilute the flavor of things. So just check you don't need to add more salt or a little bit more pepper because that creaminess can kind of wash yeah. out of flavor. And that is one of the many tips you'll be able to learn from our new TV show. <laughs> coming up <soon>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Speaking now we new TV shows. You you're you're busy. I mean, you're a hardworking woman, yes. and you're raising two girls. Yes. You've got those four animals in your house. Yes. How do you balance everything? Um, Bonnie, sometimes I ask myself the exact same question. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a case of sometimes you must do what you have to do. And I think the art is to don't say no, say yes, yes. and then do it. And like Richard Branson yes, said, yes. you don't have to do something, just say yes and then yeah. go ahead and do You're it. You're so right. I've actually had to learn that myself as well. Okay, so we're just checking on the pork right now. Let me actually just get this one here and we'll see how we're doing. Okay, so then we got the, those nice cross hatches. We touch just teach how we do it. So the trick is, and I'm a lefty, so I'll do it this way. You enter at nine o'clock and then you turn it down hmm. to six. And that way, you'll actually end up with those cross lines on your pork. Oh, yeah. So oh, some people are like, right, they'll be flipping right. the meat everywhere. But I mean, that's a cool way to remember. So our sauce is looking You've amazing. You've got so many tips and tricks. Hey, okay. hey it's just, we just full of it. We're just, right? we're just, just full of it. Lit. So Chef Aya, your ravioli is done. It's Do you done. want to dress for us? My sauce is already done now. So I'm just going to pour my sauce over my ravioli. Let me just start with my infused truffle oil with olive oil. So okay. Very light, because nice. you don't want the truffle oil. The, the truffle oil is very powerful, so you don't want it to overpower. Which, tra which truffle oil is that? Is that just uh, mushroom? Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah, truffles okay. are. Mushroom is yeah. a truffle. Yeah. Oh, mushroom yeah. is truffle, yeah. right? But it's infused with? Yeah. Olive oil. Olive oil. Because okay, it's so cool. powerful, and we don't want you to just have the flavor of truffle yeah. oil the entire time. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to now pour over my sauce. Do you want to just get a spoon and help it with it? OK, yeah. Just the wooden spoon. Just get a wooden spoon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then I'll just pour it out. Yeah. <gasps> This looks so delicious. Look at that. Oh my god. And it smells wow. good. Yeah. We decided in the locker Guys, room. Guys, look gonna... at this. You oh, have to make this dish. And it's actually quite easy to make. It's very easy. It looks very fancy, but it's very easy to make. I mean, for vegetarians, this is where they can stop mm. and enjoy this beautiful meal. Mm. So, just beautiful. in case, actually, as you're saying, we've decided in the locker already that we're going to start dieting in 2021. Not, not anytime <laughs> soon. Wow, so. I'm thinking 20, I'm, I'm dieting never. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. All right, we want to get, oh, another very controversial thing is pork fillets. You cook it medium. You don't cook it well done. Oh. Really, yeah. And the meat also and comes a lot of people would never have thought that. I think I would have, I would have assumed pork has to be cooked right through. Right through. You don't have to. And also, the thing is, as you take it off when it's medium, it'll continue cooking a little more. Mm -hmm. But pork fillet is one of those things you actually don't have to cook all the way through. Mm -hmm. You're killing all any bacteria if there is any present in there. So you're totally safe eating it like that. We always, we've been taught. Yeah pork all the way through, yes. you're fine. But you know what, chicken? You know what, you take that chicken well done. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't skim for the you degree. You cook that chicken. <laughs> you deep fry that chicken. Absolutely. The chicken can be, can be very tricky as well. Like, yeah, you, it's very yeah. easy to overcook yeah. chicken, especially if you're doing the fillet. Yeah. Exactly, because the breast cooks differently yeah. to the leg and yeah. to the yeah. thigh. Absolutely, and I cannot eat a dry breast or no. an overcooked breast. No. Overcooked but breast. that's why chicken thighs are actually the best things to eat. Lots of flavor, nice dark meat, you can cook them long, you can cook them slow. And they, they can take the they heat. They can take the heat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dark meat, we take that heat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You were so crazy. All now, if you want today's, oh yeah, all of that. <laughs> and then some. If you want today's recipe and shopping list, send directly to your phone. Simply SMS the keyword EAT to double three six five zero. SMSs are one man fifty each and no free SMSs apply. And if you have any culinary questions or you just want to chat to us, you have some tips or more questions, call us on 021-430-9881. Now, every time you use your My School, My Village, My Planet card at Woolworths, a certain percentage of the purchase value gets donated to a school or charity that matters to you most. And we've chosen to support Chuck and would love for you to get involved as well if you can. And all you need to do is download the My School app onto your phone, sign up for your free virtual card, and select Chalk, 
as your beneficiary. By doing this, you then stand a chance of winning a 1,000 Rand Woolworths gift card. I'll have that, thank you very much. Make every swipe count. Cool. So can we just recap what we've done here? So we've, our, our ravioli came yeah. out. It's al dente, okay. right? So my, uh -huh. You have to keep it quite yeah, firm, Yeah, you no? have to, you have to, you have to. Okay. And then I'm just going to finish off with some parmesan. Okay. And we poured our mushroom sauce over yeah. it and we're yeah. putting copious amounts of parmesan yeah. on it. Okay. And, and then, we, as soon as these guys are done, which is in like the next 30 seconds, mm -hmm. we'll just top it on that pasta and we'll okay. be eating. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then we'll just awesome. add more parmesan cheese later on when the meat is on the pasta. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. This kitchen has let everything taste absolutely amazing. And while we wait for these guys to get done, we're going to take a short break. Shark is one of South Africa's leading organizations who aid families who are affected by childhood cancer. Afternoon Express, together with my school, are committed to helping Chuck raise funds for a newly refurbished home away from home. You can get involved by signing up for your free virtual My School My Village My Planet card today. Download the My School app, select Chuck as one of your beneficiaries, and help us make a difference. Clover Classic Custard, the creamy taste that takes you back. Made with love by Clover. Now, we can't have an amazing cook along without something sweet and delicious. Clover Classic Custard is smooth, creamy, and delicious, making it a great ending to any meal. And on today's cook along, it is the quintessential accompaniment to a decadent sticky toffee date pudding. To get this wondrously indulgent recipe sent to your device, SMS the keyword Clover to double three six five zero. Now, Clem, sticky mm -hmm. toffee is one of my favorites. And also, I but think you're putting like a, a twist on it today. Yeah. Hey. And I think it is like an amazing winter classic. You don't get it too often because I think it's so rich. But you know what? We actually just want you to just go make it every day. <laughs> every day. So this is super easy. And you have got some eggs. Okay. And to that, I'm going to add some malted butter. Yeah. Quite a bit. We love butter. We you can add love more. butter. And then some clover full cream milk going in. Wow, what are these? Dates? That's our dates. Wow. And I mean, they're beautiful dates. Dates that are very sweet. They are. Again, I think that's what kind of makes it nice and rich. It's the dates that's in there. So I've gone in with the vanilla mm -hmm. paste. Then in here, I've got some self-raising flour okay. and brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Super easy because, I mean, we can go and add baking powder and bicarb. Self-raising flour does that for us already. Everything done. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can give it a good mix. And then we're going to go in with our wet ingredients. Uh-huh. Just like that. We're going to start mixing it. Do you want me to mix that for you? Please do. And then 
We've got some medjool dates, which are super decadent and delicious. The seeds have been taken, the pits have been taken out. Yeah. There's nothing worse than biting on a date pip. Just saying, it's, <laughs> it's horrible. So you're looking for a nice, dense batter. Okay. You can add a little bit of water to it if you All want. Right. Just Warm to give water? you that consistency. This is normal water. Or just yeah. room temperature. Yeah. You get it going. It's going to be nice and thick and sticky, just like that. Okay. Don't be tempted to add too much water though. Then you're going to lose the consistency. You don't want it runny. Okay. And then let's another trick: salt. Why? I always do salt in my baked goods. Salt. So it, with, wherever there's sugar, there's got to be a little bit of salt, exactly. right? Exactly. And it I've also opens the flavors of everything that you're using in your baked good. Now mm -hmm. these guys. Cocoa nibs. Cocoa nibs. Okay. If you get the, the chocolate craving, this is what yeah. you should go for. They are Healthy. beautiful, beautifully like flavored and yeah. good for you as yeah. well. Yeah. So I'm just going to go in with that. You could go and just use chocolate chips, mm -hmm. but I really like the crunch and the slight bitterness you get from this. We spoke about those dates being so sweet. These are slightly bitter. It's a perfect balance. Yeah. So you can give that a mix. Okay. And then with your spatula, you can pop it into How do our, I get this out? Yeah, you just gonna like on this. <laughs> this is my trick. Is that your trick? Show me your trick. Just like. Okay, that's not a trick. It's a trick. That's man. just like when your TV's not work, working, you just slap it. There we go. <laughs> Until it works. So that can go into our dish over there. Okay. You can do a normal, normal like rectangle oven dish. Mm -hmm. I like using these round dishes with the high sides because what happens is, let me just put all this stuff out the way here. Yeah. You actually end up with a beautiful pudding. That looks like this with like beautiful high sides. Lovely. Looks more glamorous Lovely. and decadent. Okay. So let's actually get that in there. It does look glamorous, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> and oh, this is actually amazing. Oh, that does look lovely. I love that consistency. Did I do that? Bunny was all you. <laughs> so sure. then, as you can see, we've got a bit of a sauce on our pudding, and that's yes, super easy. Yes. What is that? We take some butter. I'm actually going to ask you to hold it up for me quickly. Okay. This is dish, so yeah. our viewers can see, just like that. Okay. And I mean, like I said, today is all about the butter. All about the butter. So them don't scamp on that. It's about them butters. Then some brown sugar. Okay. Just break sure, it up. Sure, this is a decadent dessert. You're it taking is. no prisoners today. Not at all. And here's a little kicker, water. A bit of water? Over the top. How much water? Just a little bit. Just so you coat in that sugar and that butter. So it and caramelizes. There we go. Uh -huh. Go into the oven and it comes out looking beautiful like Ta -da! this. Voila. And now what's a sticky day toffee pudding with that with custard. custard? And we're obviously using the best Clover Classic. And there's a very important ratio. It's all of it. It's all of it. <laughs> I knew when you said <laughs> ratio that there'd be no rationing for No, you. not at all. You kind of want to get it nice and piping hot, or well, the pudding that is. Yes. And then you cover it with like room temperature clover. And just let that slide it. over it that delicious pudding. Amazing. Mm. So you call your neighbors, your neighbor's neighbors, because this is going to feed a lot of people. It is rich. It, okay? it looks like it goes a long way. It does. And that's how easy it is to make this pudding. Absolutely. Can't wait to taste that. And this is definitely a quick and easy treat to try at home. And to do that, SMS Clover to double three six five zero. If you need a little reminding of the steps, Watch this. Made with love by Clover. 
Hope you're absolutely loving our Tuesday cook along here on Afternoon Express. And if you're multitasking with your screens and you're online, head over to our social media platforms where we were asking, what's your go-to dessert? It's at Afternoon Express on Twitter using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. We'll be back after this. Clover Classic Custard, the creamy taste that takes you back. Made with love by Clover. This Thursday evening at 7.30 on Presenter Search on 3. The City of Gold awaits as auditions head to Johannesburg. We're expecting the biggest television personalities. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, there's so much talent. I wish you were just here. Oh. Join us. You know you want to. That's Presenter Search <laughs> on 3. Thursday night Boom. at 7.30 on SABC3. Repeat Saturdays at 12 midday. The stage is yours. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, you're live on SABC3. Don't miss Presenter Search tonight if you're up for a laugh. And our special guest for today is actress Felicity Reekin, and uh, she's joined us for the Afternoon Express cook-along where we prepared a pork fillet with mushroom truffle pasta, followed by a sticky toffee date and cocoa nib pudding. Isn't that mm. amazing? It just sounds delicious. And we made it all. We did. I'm How quick so was that? Us, yeah. How quick was that? That's it's very quick. quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Just a quick uh, reminder. Presenter search is on Thursday at seven thirty. <laughs> okay. So, what do you think? Are you impressed? I'm very, And we very really impressed. eat on, on, on this TV. <laughs> on this TV, we really <laughs> eat. Guests yeah. are always surprised. I am very impressed. I think it looks absolutely delicious. Um, as you can see, I like to eat even in real life. So I, I can't wait. Honestly, yeah, can't yeah. Wait, yeah. Okay, we'll let you do the honors. Stop. And it. while you do the honors, uh, let's chat about your new gig. Yes. So, I mean, one of my new gigs. One of you? Yes, girl. yeah. It's never just I'm one. right through. <laughs> um, I am now the new anchor host for one of South Africa's longest legacy shows, 50 50. Woohoo! Yes. And you're also a nature lover. I am a nature lover. I think it's important for education to be, to be taught to people from a very young age with regards to to conservation and it's not just cons you know conservation um, when it comes to animals it's the balance between humans and nature mm -hmm. how do we actually find that what's the best way to do that for how do everybody we involved? Yes. absolutely yes. yeah so I'm very very happy and proud about that exciting well. yes. and the other one uh, I've got a skincare company very innovative wow yes. that's amazing yeah. and I'm sure it's obviously very sustainable and natural products conscious it is very conscious but what it also is is it's scientifically for Mm -hmm. but also looking at you as a human being and going what do you actually need for your skin 
the last things we need are more chemicals and all that kind of yes. stuff. We need to give us back what we need. Um, and it's also great for anti-aging and all that kind of stuff. Yay. Also the conditions that we live in in South yeah. Africa. You know, we've got so many types of skin in this country and this skincare range is just really phenomenal for all skin types. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow, sounds very exciting. You've been Thank busy. You. Yes, yes I have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> A good busy. All yes. right. So Bon, you're going to attack it from that end? Perfect. Okay. I'll hold the ball. How's I'm that? definitely attacking it. Yeah. Oh, sweet. This looks so delicious, it guys. Is. Right. Pass I don't the actually know how you guys do this. I would, I, I would okay. be like sewed into a couch. So, <laughs> I cannot wait for your verdict on this. Okay. Okay, there we go. Oh, sorry, darling. You know it's a good move when it's like I'm like quiet. rushing to it before you. <laughs> I love that you've mixed both the raviolis, right? So there's mm -hmm. the um, butternut and the mushroom. Formaggio. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think? Oh, that is so rich. Whoa. That is so good. Mm. Do you know what that means? It's a fire. Mm -hmm. um, it passed me and I need a glass of red wine later red on. Red wine, evening. a fire. Mm -hmm. Blanky mm -hmm. series. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> delicious, delicious. I'm loving this review. I love how tender the pork is. Mm. Exactly, and obviously you lose all of that when you overcook it. Yeah. So cook it medium. Mm. Or, yeah. These mushrooms are beautiful there. Oh mm. my word, yeah. Yeah, you can mm. even taste like the color from it, like the brownness from it. Mm. Clem? Really yummy. Have you always known that we can have pork medium well? Well, I think, like I said earlier, we were always taught not to ever have it like that. And after people started experimenting more, we found out that, hey, you don't have to cook it to death. Mm -hmm. You know, medium and to medium well is perfect. You don't have to kill your pork. But yeah. we're learning so much. I mean, also, I've only ever known, enough from my mother, mother's an amazing cook, but other people, green beans aren't green, they're great. Mm. And then cook it the right way. Wait, they actually are green. Mm. You know, we don't have to cook everything to death. We lose nutrients. And we're finding out all those things now. Yeah. Also, I mean, it comes with, with the methods when you're cooking your veggies with your blanching and then your, 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 your um, water baths and all that to keep your veggies green and crispy and fresh. Exactly. And but we you know what it is, though? Yeah. That's education. Yeah. If you say to somebody, you know, blanch it and then put it in a water bath and they go, no, that sounds yeah. like I can't be doing any of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy. So yeah. just education, explain to people what you actually mean when you say blanch something or water bath, then you're empowering them rather yeah. than going, you know, and then sous vide. What? what? Exactly. Like, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Until they exactly. get to do it. Exactly. And they're like, oh, this is so easy. Yeah. <laughs> and how often do you cook at home? Um, every night. So I have, my oldest daughter is vegetarian. Every night? Every night. Um, there are some nights where I have Who takeaways. Um, and especially when my girls go to their dad every second weekend. Yes. Then I, don't, I find it very hard to cook for one. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to. I think my, it's the colored in me. So when I cook, I cook for <laughs> like 14,000 people are coming to my house and it's just me and my two kids. And like I said, my oldest daughter is vegetarian, but my youngest isn't. And the only reason why she's able to still be vegetarian is because she knows that I won't allow her to just live off pasta or potatoes. Or cheese and bread. Exactly. Yeah. So I make a meal for me and my youngest and then a meal for my young, wow. my oldest. So she says things like, you know, it's been so easy. And I'm like, oh, I'm not surprised. Because <laughs> you don't cook your own food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah uh, I guess the biggest challenge also for people going vegan or vegetarian is actually keeping it exciting. Yeah. Absolutely, and we're so lucky now in this time to actually have so many options when it comes to being vegetarian and being vegan. Mm. I feel sorry if, if you were vegan 10 years ago. Yes. Like shame. Yes. No, but now, I mean, we, like, it's great. And we're actually helping the system out there, farmers out there, mm -hmm. by taking, even like those meat-free Mondays, make a huge difference. Yeah. I mean, at the, the same time, it, it, it yeah. has become like a fashion now. Mm. Like, you, you get people that are like, okay, I'm going to be vegan for a month. I'm going to be vegetarian for like four months. So it, it, it's, it's kind of great to get people that are doing that to also experience how to be creative in the kitchen, playing around with vegetarian stuff, even though they know yeah. vegetarian. Challenges us. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The easiest way to do it, guys, honestly, start a veggie garden. I started a little veggie garden just for, honestly, giggles. And the stuff you can pull out of your garden, it Beautiful makes it easy stuff. and it's inexpensive mm. for you because you use what you need. You're not going to buy a whole big thing of mm. edamame beans because, then, you know, you, you have to use the whole packet. And then let it go off in the fridge exactly. or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank it's you for having me. It's been splendid having you. Thank you for And um, me. you've always had an illustrious career, and I'm sure you've got quite an interesting career bucket list ahead of you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you're going to tick it all off. <laughs> I know you are. You're a focus girl. Thank, thank you. you so much, chefs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome.
So coming up tomorrow, we focus on the silent killer high blood pressure. One in three adults in South Africa have high blood, pre high blood pressure and we'll be unpacking the risks and we look at how to eat healthy for all blood types. Yeah, so have you ever eaten for your own blood type? I've never. Yeah. No, and I don't know about it, so I'm going to find out tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, I know a little bit about it, and I have tried it, and I, it, I must say it was a bit miserable. So. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Get your mom to cook for you. Well, it was basically that I can't eat all the things I love. Uh, all the oh, lovely no. stuff that I really enjoy. My blood type was like, no, you shouldn't be eating that. Oh. But yeah. But thank you so much. The food is amazing. And to you at home, I hope you were cooking along with us. And if you weren't, bank that recipe for another day. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Have a good evening. Happy eating. God bless. Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.